I am teacher Boas, the mathematics teacher in the room. So today I want to tell you something brief about the performance of mathematics and I will also take you something about the A levels, that is about the Cambridge. Before I do that guys, I would give you a brief definition about, about me, about who I am. I did my uh, KCSE in Kisumu Day High School. That's where I was the one leading in mathematics across all the Nyanza province. I know some of my teachers that are watching behind there, they know very well that Boaz was the best mathematics student in the whole Nyanza. Across Nyanza during those times we could do the contest. So I did my KCC and I performed so well. I had my A in mathematics. In physics I had an A. In biology I had an A. I did so well in mathematics and sciences. And after graduating from high school, my performance was very brilliant. So I was engaged as a mathematics teacher in Kisumu Boys High School where I was teaching only the Form 4 class, the mathematics. We did it so well and I created, nurtured that passion. I developed that interest in the students within the school and they did so well in their KCC. During those early times, I could mentor schools like the Kisumu Girls High School. I did a lot of work just before joining the campus. When I joined campus, I did mathematics and physics as a teacher. Now I'm a registered teacher. Then after doing that, I got my first job in State House Girls High School where I did mathematics with my students. I was a mathematics teacher in State House Girls. My class happened to be the best class in the entire State House Girls. And we were being labeled conquerors on conquest. Because I believe in this life you have to do something with passion. You have to develop much more interest in whatever that you are doing. And during those early times in 2012, I became the mentor in Kenya High School. I was mentoring the Form 4 students, especially in mathematics. And I did it so well that the student did so well in their KCSC in the year 2012. After that, I went back to the University of Nairobi where I did my actuarial science because I loved mathematics so much. So I started mentoring students guiding them on how the studying models and the studying techniques and they were doing so well in their exams. So later on I started learning and practicing this, learning, get, getting the experience under the Cambridge curriculum. Then I taught in one of the schools in Nairobi which, is, which was a Cambridge school, it was an international school, doing all the way to A levels in year 13. After that I got my job in St. Christophers in Karen, where I taught mathematics in that school. Then later on, I got my other job in Kileleshwa International School, where I was the principal. I mentored my students, I guided them, I motivated them and inspired them. And the school started performing so well. So in a nutshell, not to talk much, yes, I've worked with so many international schools. My students have been doing so well because I come up with models on guiding them on how they should study. And today I would love to talk something about how should students study this topic or this subject called mathematics? How would they do so that they gain better grades in the performance? Then later on I'll touch something on the A levels because I understand information is power. And the moment I give my parents across all over because my program under the Disneyland Media International, which is our company, for basically mentoring and conducting conferences. Some of them have not been given adequate information about the A levels because some students may think after the year 11 they are done, which is in complete high school. They need to go all the way to A levels. So the first thing that I would like to touch, I'd written some of my posters here. One of them here that is so much instrumental when a student get get a question uh, you have to develop and carry out a plan and before you develop and carry out a plan the most important thing in any mathematics question is to understand the problem so this to me is very important as a mathematics student always make sure that you read the question and understand what you are doing 
Because many a time students don't do well in their mathematics, not because they are not intelligent, not because they are not smart, but simply because they do not read the question. And I'll have a sample question from my, there's a question that I've prepared here to guide you through what do I mean by understand the problem. So it's always important that you understand the problem. After you've understood the problem, you develop and carry out a plan. Guys, this is a very important concept. You make sure that you develop and carry out a plan. Okay? Then lastly, according to my plan, you must find the answer and check. How do we find the answer and check? And I want to give you a simple question so that from that, we will understand how this model works. And here is the question. The question clearly says you have it from the textbook. It says the perimeter of a rectangular field is 204 meters. And here I read, the perimeter of a rectangular field is 204 meters and the area is 2,565 meters squared. Find the dimension of the field. Now, the question that you need to ask yourself, understand the problem. Dear students, and even the parents listening to me, all the way from Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, United States, Canada, German, the whole globe, parents listening to me and most of the students that I can see logging in online. Now listen to this. How do you understand the problem? Now understand the problem simply means you need to know what they're talking about. You will allow me rub some place here. Now we know very well they're talking about what? A rectangle. They're talking about a rectangle. And I know at this stage, I'll walk you through this question so that you can understand what I'm talking about. Now, they talked about a rectangle. So the first thing you do, draw it. That's a model. That's a graphic. It's something that will trigger your mind and allow you to think even much better. But remember one thing, when, whenever you've done that, you know that in a rectangle we always have the length and we have the width. Now these guys are telling you the perimeter of that particular rectangle. Here they said the perimeter is 204. So if I have your width and I have your width, so what is perimeter? When you add all round, you get the 204. So you will come and say the two of the length plus the two of the width will give you 204. That is basically what the question clearly tells here. Then the next part they say the area of the rectangle is given to be 2565. But we all know how do we find the area? The area is simply length times width. So you know very well that the product of the two, when you take here LW, you get 25, what was it? 2565. 2565. Now, we already know here that this is the area, and we already know here this is the perimeter. I'm not working it out to give you the answer, but I'm guiding my students that you identify the problem first. Remember, if they talk about a diagram, an object, please make sure that you sketch it. Even if it is a biology, a physics, a scientific, a science subject, make sure that you can sketch that particular diagram. Then I think by doing that, you can remember the models. Now the perimeter, at least you write a formula, which we consider as a method when you substitute the right values. Then also the formula for the area. That is the first part that we need to do. Then the next part that I'd already talked about, develop out a plan. So what are we doing? This is a plan we are developing. That's the plan I was talking about. That's the plan I was clearly talking about here. Remember here I'd said develop and carry out a plan. So this is the plan. Are we good? Then from developing out and carrying out a plan, you will find your answer, then substitute back, then you test if that answer provides that. So today I did not intend to teach you the real mathematics here, but to provide some three key basics. And please note it down. Number one that I just said, you have to understand the problem. Number two, as I said, develop and carry out a plan. Number three, find the answer substitute and check. So that's a very important part that I wanted to teach you today basically on covering on that. Now let me tell you something very brief about the A levels. Let me tell you something very brief about the A levels. I have my notes here that I've prepared so well and I wanted to guide my students on this. 
I know some of you are doing their Cambridge, the International General Certificate of Secondary Education. Now, A level simply is broken into different categories. Maybe somebody has done their IGCSE and they would love maybe to go and do IB. IB means International Baccalaureate. It's just a diploma that takes the two years. Or you go to BTEC. Remember, BTEC is simply a vocational course, a vocational course foundation. But if we talk about in the A levels, remember one thing. There are some of the things I want to share to my parents across the entire globe. You know, sometimes you've been having a desire to know all this, but you do not have the information. So here, there is no compulsory subject at A level. That's one of the most important things that you need to note. There is no compulsory subject at A level. Number two, why Cambridge A levels? Why would we do the Cambridge A levels? Remember, they are the UK's accredited standard for all university entry in the whole world. So it is the UK that have accredited that body that whoever was done the A levels, now they are considered that they have completed the high school. And remember this, the subjects are very flexible. Flexible subjects, subject selection that will best route you into the top universities in the whole world. Okay? Now, one of the good things that you need to know, whoever is doing their levels, by that time they will be academically, they will be socially, and it also promotes the psychological growth. Because that time that you take doing that. Now, there are two types of models that you do in the A levels. One of them we normally call the modular. One of them we call modular. And we also have what is called linear. But I will start with the modular part. Number one, we know very well that in year 12, we normally call it AS, which means advanced subsidiary. Then year 13, we call it the A levels. To some of you are already there. Now listen to this. If you go the modular way, you will do 50% of the exams in year 12. And you will also do 50% of the other exams in year 13. I may provide an example where I'm a professional teacher of physics in a levels under the Cambridge schools. Like in physics, we have different papers. Let me say in, in, year, in, year, in year 12, you decide and maybe do paper 1, paper 2, and paper 3. Then paper 4 and paper 5, you do in year 13. So you see it is breaking it down. The 50% you do in year 12, the 50% you do in year 13. Then if you talk about linear, I have to give you a detailed information to all my students across the globe. Linear means there is no exams to be done in year 12. You do all your exams in year 13, which is the A levels. But I think one of the encouragements I would encourage my students across and even my parents Modular would always be the best option. Why? If you fail maybe in May, June, you can resit in November and December. Remember, there are two different sessions. Whoever fails in May, June can resit the same, same papers in November. So that is the advantage of doing what? Or doing the modular. Then what are the prerequisites? What are the requirements? Can we just walk out from anywhere, maybe year 7, year 10, or maybe from Kenyan system and say, I want to do a levels? No. There are some of the prerequisites. An evidence of completing your IGCSE. You must confirm that you completed your IGCSE or GCE in exams. Then here we always take a minimum of five subjects. Remember, we normally take, allow me rub this part. Under the A levels, remember you do a minimum of five credit passes. So you need to know that a minimum of five credit passes. If you want to go to the A levels, you must have a minimum of five credit passes. So what do I mean by that? A minimum of five Cs. So see how going to the A levels is not that tough as you think. So you just need a minimum of the five Cs. That means a minimum five credit passes. Now, if you want to pursue a specific subject, like my passion in my mathematics, you must get a minimum of a B in mathematics. 
If you want to pursue an English subject, you must get a minimum of what? A minimum of B. But remember, there is no new subject in A levels. Maybe only in sociology. We can only do it in sociology and in psychology. That is the only two subjects that you can introduce as a new subject in A level. Number two, uh, November gives you an opportunity to receipt an exam. Remember, if you don't do well in May, June, you can do a receipt. A receipt means you revise better and do the same exam in November so that you may do well. Then year 12 certificate, there are some of the key features that you need to know. People who do the modular way that have done some exams in year 12 and year 13, you will find that in year 12, they use small letters like small a, small b. That simply is an indicator that you have not completed your A-levels as it is preparing you to join your what? To join your year 13. Now in year 12, you can uh, personally as an expert and an experienced person under the Cambridge curriculum, I would encourage you to do I mean, to do four subjects. Year 12, you can do four subjects. Then when you reach the year 13, you can drop one and do three. Those are some of the things that are, should be considered. You can do four in year 12. And when you go to year 13, you drop and only do three subjects. But here in 12, you can do four. So you are allowed to drop one and remain with only three in year 13. Okay? Now, if you are not performing well in a subject, I would also encourage you, please do not do it. Anybody who is not performing well in a specific subject, do not do it. Just select the subject that you can do well. And remember, there are some of the factors that determines the type of subjects that we do. Number one is your profession, your career. Maybe you want to do actuarial science like I did. Maybe you want to be an engineer. Maybe you want to be a pharmacist. Maybe you want to be a doctor. Aeronautical engineering. You have to do a subject that relates, are in line with that career. The other thing here is guidance. I know our parents put in a lot of effort in guiding our students. So those are some of the factors. You are passionate in life. You cannot say you want to be an engineer and you are not passionate about engineering. You cannot say you want to be a doctor. You are not passionate about seeing dead bodies. So you do according to the passion. So as our program here of doing the mentoring, we have a cycle of three months, a full package. So you can reach us through our contacts here or you can go through our email but mostly take my contact if you need more information to inquire or just subscribe to Disneyland International. You can also follow me in the YouTube channel as Teacher Boaz, where I teach a lot of mathematics, I teach a lot of sciences, I teach a lot of physics. I mentor students. We have one-to-one, -one, which is the physical. We also do the online. Online in the sense that it doesn't matter whether you are in Europe, Antarctic, whether you are in Asia, whether you are in Canada, it doesn't matter. We're just giving you the login details so we can teach you and we are a team, we are a big team. I'm the one who is leading this company. It is my own initiative and has been helping so many parents and the students. I believe if you do all that and follow us and follow the little concept I've provided, you will do great. Otherwise, guys, have a blessed day. Make sure you subscribe and follow us. Thank you, guys.